Hello everybody, welcome back, and yes, today we are getting into NFTs. And since this is a Solana tutorial and a Rust tutorial, we're going to learn about NFTs specifically on Solana, and we're going to see how we can implement some of the transactional work that underlies NFTs in Rust. Now, I just wanted to make this first video here to talk about what NFTs actually are and what's happening under the hood. And why is this important? Well, I was doing a lot of research on how to like make these videos and how to exemplify working with NFTs for you guys. And I found that there was a lot of explanations that were really like abstract, you know, they were kind of high level metaphorical explanations and they're really good for people who don't want to develop, but there's not a whole lot of stuff out there for people who really just want to understand the technical aspect of what's happening. So I pieced together some docs and I wanted to make this first video to talk about how NFTs work under the hood, specifically on Solana as well. And then in the next video, we're going to get into the rust where we're actually going to do like a mock NFT marketplace, similar to something like OpenSea. So if you guys already know how everything works under the hood for NFTs and you just want to see the rust code, you can probably skip ahead to the next video. Um, but if you want to learn all that stuff, then stay tuned because I got this nice diagram here for you guys to talk about how NFTs actually work. So let's run through this thing. So to start in the middle, we've got our program. And this is actually like a collection of programs, like a bunch of programs, really. And this is kind of pretty much OpenSea right here. Or, you know, any other kind of NFT marketplace platform that you might be working with. So what these really do is they're apps or dApps that have programs on chain that will actually handle a lot of the necessary transactions to work with NFTs. They kind of like extract it all away for you and like make it easy for a user to come in and mint and have auctions and whatnot. So the way that they do this is there's minting and then there's of course bidding and, and you know changing the ownership of the NFT. On the left here, we're gonna talk a little bit about minting. So somebody comes in and says, hey, I wanna, I wanna mint an NFT. And that account is the first user in this scenario, right? They come in and they request to mint an NFT. And now the programs on chain will go ahead and do the act of minting an NFT, which as you can see down here, it's actually pretty simple. So the marketplace programs will actually use, in the case of Solana, it'll use the SPL token toolkit and it will mint a new token. Now you can set the token supply to whatever you want. But when you're working with NFTs, what makes them unique is that there's only one, right? So it immediately will set the supply to one. And then right after doing so, it will freeze all minting of that token in the future. And this cannot be undone. So that right there is how NFTs are created. One token is gened and there can never be another like it. And that token is your NFT. That's your non-fungible token. Now, all of the neat stuff that we see with NFTs that is associated metadata. So now that we've seen how this minting process works, pretty straightforward, and we'll demo that on the command line shortly, what do we actually get? Well, over here, we've got what an NFT actually looks like under the hood. So the account owner who minted it now has this token. And that token is this unique one supply token that cannot be minted again, like we just said. And it actually points to another account on Solana that's called a metadata account. And it's literally just an account like we've seen in previous videos that stores data about what this token represents. So in the case of artwork, like a board ape, you have this token pointing to the metadata that describes what that pictorial representation is. Now, originally NFTs were all stored on chain, right? So you're, your token and your metadata account, um, pretty much on Ethereum for a little while, was all stored on chain. But that became problematic really quickly as you had higher quality images, you know, stuff that doesn't maybe exist on the internet, like real life utility things. That kind of became tough to keep all on chain. So nowadays what you see is there's a fair amount of NFTs, especially like the artwork ones, where the metadata actually is like a descriptor and it points to your image in some other off-chain location. So if you ever hear people talk about how NFTs are really just like a pointer, 
that just like point to something. Um, that kind of is the case, depending on where you're buying and, and how you're doing it. But in a nutshell, this is how they're set up. Your token is bound to the metadata account and it's owned by the person who minted it. So once that happens and this NFT is in circulation, there's additional programs in the marketplace as part of this DAP that will actually allow all of the bidding and kind of like steward all of those transactions. So you've got all these people that come in and they might bid on your NFT and the on-chain programs provided by the marketplace will actually control like the transferring of your NFT. So when you have a winner, like let's say for, I have this example here, let's say you want to sell it for 50 soul, right? Your NFT closes bidding, 50 soul is the highest bidder. What it'll do is it'll transfer that 50 soul from the purchaser to you and then it will transfer the NFT from you to the purchaser. And obviously, since we're talking about blockchain, this is all verified, validated, so it's totally legit. And then once this is done, that NFT is now owned by the purchaser. Now, that's all done on chain. That's all done with Solana system programs. And we actually saw the transfer of something. In the case of our previous video, it was actual Solana, Lamports. We've seen that before. So it's like an intrinsic program. Now, the other stuff, like tracking who's the highest bidder, you know, like who's got an account, like who has other NFTs, all that stuff, that's typically done with off-chain software. It doesn't have to be, but it usually is because it's not really necessary to have all of the bids on-chain per se, right? Maybe it is, though. Maybe, maybe some platforms might want all that information on-chain so you can validate that all of these bids are legit. It's really up to the marketplace and the engineers who put it together. Um, it can completely vary. But the point is, this stuff is actually intrinsically pretty simple. You know, you just have one token that's created, finite supply of one, never changes. And once that's been created, it points to some metadata and that token can be exchanged ownership. And then obviously the marketplace itself controls what you get paid for your NFT. So. This is it, guys. You can take a look at this diagram anytime you want. It's on the GitHub. This is how they work. And now let's take a look at this exact process here from the Solana CLI, and we'll see exactly what's going on, and we'll actually check it out in like the Solana Explorer and stuff. All right, so I've just got a terminal open here, and we're going to fire off these commands to actually create an NFT token and see what that looks like. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to start completely from scratch here. So you guys have seen this before. We're going to use Solana Keygen New. I'm going to skip the BIP39 passphrase. And then I'm going to make the output file just some arbitrary location on my WSL instance. So we'll just do like test key pair dot JSON. Oops. So now that you can see we've got our seed phrase there, we created a new key pair, and I'm actually gonna set the config here using this command to the key pair that we just created because I don't wanna use the one that I've already got set up here. I wanna just use this test one. So as you can see, that just set our key pair path to this one. We're already on the devnet, so that's good. Um, if you're not already on the devnet, you could do Solana config set URL and then just put this in there and that will put you on the devnet. And so now that we're on the devnet, we're going to actually go ahead and create our token. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure the SPL token, the command line interface for tokens on Solana is installed. Now, if you did the typical Solana CLI install, this is probably on your computer already, but just type SPL dash token. And if you get this help menu back, that means you got it. And you can see all the different commands in here, and we're actually gonna use a couple of these. So first we'll start with SPL token create, actually we're gonna do create token. So we're gonna create a brand new token. And as you can see, it go ahead and creates this token, but we don't have enough souls, so we wanna just do a quick airdrop. And once that's done, we'll run the create token command again, because you do need some Solana to do this. So now that we've got a little bit of soul, this should process no problem. And as you can see, there's the signature, it went through, and this is actually the address of our token here, the token ID. So now immediately after this, 
what you want to do with the command line setup is you need to actually create an account that's a token account that's designed to receive tokens on Solana. It's different than your traditional Solana account because what you're receiving is not technically sold. It's this new account or this new token you just created. So you need to type this command, SPL token, create account. And if you type help next to create account, you'll see that there's some options here and you're going to have to do create account. And then the mandatory input is going to be the token address. Now we already saw that, right? So if I just go ahead and scroll back up and I grab this token ID here and I go ahead and paste it, then this is going to create an account that is eligible to receive these tokens. And actually this account that we just created, this token account, since we're using the Solana CLI and the config pointing to that key pair that we just made, it's actually going to be owned by my account that I have, that I just created for you in front of you. And we'll see that in a second. So before we do anything else, I actually want to pop open Chrome here or whatever browser you want to use. And I actually want to go to the Solana Explorer. And if you guys don't know what this thing is, you'll figure it out in a sec when you see me go through this, but basically you can search all kinds of on-chain stuff on Solana and see any kind of activity, balances, what have you. So we're going to go look up the account that we created with that key pair to start this. So here's the public key. And we're going to go to the Explorer, paste it in here. And as you can see, there's the address. Now we're also on the main net though. So make sure you change this over to the dev net. Now that we're on dev net, you should see almost one soul minus what we paid to obviously transact that creation of the token. Now, since we can click tokens here and we can see that this token is a total balance of zero, but look at this, the token holdings already comes up with our token ID. As you can see, our token ID is this 2ACJE, whatever, right? And that is exactly what we see right here, but there's zero. So what you wanna do here is actually go ahead and do SPL token mint. You want to do the token ID and then just whatever quantity you want to mint. So let's go with one. Now you can enter a recipient address here at the end, but if you don't, it automatically defaults to the local key pair that you're using. In this case, that's what we want. So we're going to just fire this off. You see we're minting one token. And right there is enough to give us one in that balance column. Boom. And now this is exactly what you would have with an NFT, right? You would do this process and then you would cap the supply at one so that there's only one of these tokens in existence. There's nothing like it. And that makes it a non-fungible token. Now let's go ahead and actually run through this for a, an actual NFT, like what this would look like. Because what we just did is technically just a creation of any kind of token. And if you go to the command line, we can actually go ahead and mint like 50 more of these as long as we have enough Solana to do that. And you could see in the Explorer that the supply isn't capped, right? So it's not non-fungible at the moment. So what we want to actually do is run through the process again. And if we go back up to the create token step to actually do an NFT, what you want to add is this flag here, decimals zero and that will make sure that this token follows the protocol for nfts on solana so it's going to look exactly the same as before it's going to create this token for us and this time we've got this eedk2 right so next we're of course going to go to the create account step we're going to take out the previous token id and we're going to put our nfts token id this eedk and once we've created the token account, again, owned by our local key pair account, then you'll see it actually pop up in the Explorer like we saw the last time. There it is, EEDK. Again, set at zero. So we're going to go in and do the mint step again. And now, once we mint this, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So we'll mint one token. And just like I said in the last you know, run through this, that this is going to be capped. To do that, it looks like this. You actually do SPL token, authorize, and we're gonna put the token ID again, mint dash dash disable. 
and this is permanent so make sure you guys are definitely sure you want to do this but the idea is obviously it's gonna be permanent so no one can reverse this fire that off and that will disable minting of this token so now there can only ever be one now really quickly before we go check on that balance I just want to mention that we're able to do this command this authorized command because like I said earlier by default this SPL token command is taking our local key pair as the mint authority and that's super important because if this mint authority belonged to somebody else and what that means is if somebody else created this token and we were trying to go mint some more of it this would not let us do it and you could add you know different key pairs and things like that on the end with different options you know all you have to do is type SPL token in something like help or SPL token authorize help and you can get some information here about how to do that but it's important to mention that because we are the local key pair and that's the one who created it that's what's being used by default and allowing us to do that but you are not allowed to just do that at will anyway let's go check on our balance here which should be one and it'll never change now because there can never be more and that ladies and gentlemen is an nft that's all it is it's just a token capped at a supply of one and in the next video we're going to actually see a little bit of that stuff implemented in rust and we're going to talk about how this one token actually can encompass things like artwork and real world utility